We can start uh, with our first uh, intervention um, from uh, Melissa Diaz Lima. And floor, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Lorenzo, for the introduction. Um, my name is Melissa Diaz. I'm a researcher at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, and along with uh, Chiara Masci, Mara Sancino, and Tommaso Gassisti, that are my former colleagues, we are presenting you these three preliminary results. Um, then wants to look at the impact of primary schools math skills on academic achievement. And just a little bit of background of why doing this work. I work mostly in the field that is called learning analytics. Uh, that one of the things that wants to achieve with learning analytics is the development of something called early warning systems that try to anticipate as soon as possible when a student is about either to complete explicit dropout or implicit dropout. Implicit dropout in terms that he or she may graduate from high school, for example, but they do not have the minimum requirements for doing that. And with some research activities, we actually figure out that we can anticipate, like we can actually predict why, with a high accuracy, with three or five years of anticipation, the student will drop out from a school or will not reach the minimum amount of competences. And why? What I was wondering in particular is, and then, so what we can do if we know already that a kid is about to drop out from school? Then, of course, this is another field of research because there are uh, people working on particular interventions called handle thing, but I thought, okay, let's not just predict that a student will drop out, but let's try to figure out which are the skills that are lacking for him or her to drop out. And that's, let's say, the background of this study. Um, so we know uh, that uh, mathematical skills predict positive adult outcomes. So from college degree attain attainment to job quality and salary. We also know that despite uh, math being considered a difficult subject for almost everyone, there is also a large amount of heterogeneity within. So uh, there is a difference among individuals, classrooms, and countries. And we know that every academic challenge persists over time. So if a a kid at primary school has difficulties with mathematics, he is more likely to be, have also problems later on in his life or her life with mathematics. But uh, we often label children as good or bad at math, but the general ratings of good or bad at math actually hides the specific strengths and weakness on particular skills. And Understanding, for example, the variability among the skills in mathematical achievements may allow us to, for example, support a specific skills in children. Okay? So this is, as I was telling you, a really preliminary research, but we wanted to, I mean, we wonder to what extent a student's math skills profiles during primary school predict their academic performance later on at the end of lower secondary school. Um, what is the empirical strategy of our study? So our outcome variable is again uh, the math achievement of kids at the end of lower secondary school, explained by the math profile of the kids and several other control covariates like demographic information, educational background, and some covariates related with the environment. As a first step, we wanted to build the profiles of the skills. And to do so, we instead of using, for example, the single score that the student achieved during the math profile, we built the profiles given all the questions that he or she answered correctly in the advanced test. And all these questions through all the cohorts are divided in four macro areas that are what that we consider these skills. So questions related with figures, questions related with functions, questions related with numbers, and questions related with uh, provisions. In the next step, we wanted to figure out whether it was actually more convenient to consider profiles rather than the general score at math. So we tried to, again, predict the performance at the end of lower secondary school, considering a model that only took into consideration the score at grade five. Then a model that considers the profile, so whether the kids was profile one, profile two, or profile three, depending on the number of profiles, and we're, we're seeing that later. And then, uh, finally, we say, okay, let's estimate the impact of these profiles 
in the, in the, in the performance later on controlling also for other variables. Okay? So just an overview of the data that we use. So of course our out outcome is, again, the math score at the end of lower secondary school. Um, to build the math profiles, we're comparing the score at grade five, but also, again, the items of the questionnaire of math to, to, to build up the profiles. Then we have demographic information like sex, citizenship, a student socioeconomical status, previous academic information, whether uh, the kid attend or not the kindergarten, the enrollment, and the school grade, and some environmental variables, such as the class socioeconomical status of the kid, of the pupil, and the geo macro area, so where it's in the north, the south, uh, the center, and so on. Okay, so how many profiles? So how many profiles can we define of, of kids' math skills? Um, so the graph on the left, pr pretty much for the fit indices that you can figure out when you are uh, modeling a Latin class analysis, and it's pretty much tell us you should select the number of profiles that are in the elbow uh, part of the analysis. So here we have between three and four profiles should be good enough to describe the population of the students. However, since our aim was to predict, so we wanted to figure out which is uh, the best number of profiles that is able to explain the largest parts of the variability, or the, let's say, to predict the most, the future performances, and that is the graph that you see on the right. So we pretty much notice that having four profiles will uh, allow a better prediction later on on a student's career. Uh, and also the other important thing to notice is that, for example, if you consider five profiles, you're pretty much going to explain the variability of having two profiles. So good kids and bad kids, uh, let's say, not, I mean, high skills pupils and low skill pupils. Okay, how are these profiles shaped? Um, so, both of the gap has more or less the same information, maybe the one on the right is more clear, but technically what you see, each row is one profile, and the colors is the uh, proportion of kids who answer correctly uh, the questions on that specific skill. So what we see is that the class one, for example, are uh, the profiles of high skilled pupils, while class number three is the profile of lower skilled pupils. But we also see some difference among the skills themselves. So for example, we have that the, all the questions related, related to the skills of provisions are the less challenging one <coughs> across all the profiles. So pretty much kids are more likely to, are, are more confident with these type of questions. But we see also some heterogeneity across, for example, the function parts. So pretty much kids that perform well tend to be have a high score in the function parts. But kids that perform badly tend to always perform bad at that particular skill. Functions and relations, so pretty much everything related with how to shape the world with an equation, is the probably the most, I mean, is the type of a skill that is more troubling for kids at primary school. So having, again, these four type of profiles in mind, so let's say two higher skills ones and two lower skills. Um, this is the distribution of the data that we have available since we want to predict uh, skills at grade A, so we have we, we need we needed to match the students between the grade five and grade eight. And pretty much we see that around 70% of the population is in either profile two uh, or profile four, that let's say is more or less the average while around 15% of the students are either the top profile performance or the low profile performance. The other information that we can have with this sort of modeling technique is that we don't only have that, for example, the student Mario Rossi is profile two, just a label, but we have the likelihood for him to belong to a profile. So for example, in this random example, this student that is labeled as profile two has a 92% likelihood of belonging to that profile, and for example, has a 0% likelihood of belonging to the bottom profile in this particular case. Okay. Um, this is just some descriptive of, of the, the, all the data that we have available divided by profiles. So, um, for example, we can see that 
kids, the high skills profile kids are mostly males, and the, let's say, we're, we're talking about math, so let's say this is the that you repeat, and the lowest, uh, so there are more females in the lowest skill profile. We can also so, see some difference, so for example, also in the lower skills profile, so profile number three, there are a larger proportion of foreigner students. Uh, and then something different with respect to the whole or, or the usual uh, scenario is that also in the first profile, there are the, in proportion, there are more students from the south. So probably there is a large variability uh, in the southern regions, but there, there is a really, really good students over there that enter, let's say, into what is called uh, profile one. These were just some descriptive, so let's pass to the, to the step two of the analysis. So we wanted to figure out if the profiles help us to better predict the outcomes at grade eight. And what we found is that is they are more informative than the, math, than the score at grade five. So if we try to predict what we're going to happen with the student in three years from now, and we use the simple score, it's helpful, but it's not as helpful as using the profiles. Uh, this is the same graph that we show, that I showed you before, so technically how we choose <laughs> the best number of profiles. And the red line is the uh, variability display, so the just R square of a model considering only the math score at grade five. And we were a, a little bit surprised by this at the beginning because we thought, okay, the numeric indicator, we have a lot of variabilities so will tell us more, but apparently it doesn't consider a, a Apparently, skills are actually relevant in mathematics to be able to explain also future performances. So, the first answer to the question is yes. That let's say profiling the students through their through their skills will allow us to better predict their future performances. And the model you can see the adjusted R square. You gain more information again, considering in particular not only I mean not the profile itself but the likelihood of belonging to a profile, okay? As an information. Um, and these, let's say, are the models uh, that for now are just uh, OLS, but we will try some other modeling techniques that are trying to, trying to estimate the effect of belonging to a certain profile. And here it's a little bit more complicated, but maybe it's easier to look at in this, in this graph. So this graph pretty much look at the estimate of all the four models. So the model only considering the profiles and then the model considering, let's say, all the control variables. And what we can see from this particular preliminary comparison is that, for example, this is uh, the, the reference category in this case is the profile one that are the kids who are um, high, high skills kids, so the, the profile with all the blue colors, let's say. And uh, what we see, of course, if you belong to any other profile that are not, or if you, have, if you have a high likelihood of belonging to any other profile, of course you decrease your performance uh, at, grade a, at grade A. But what we see is that while there are certain profiles that are quite consistent through all the models, so after adding control variables, what we can see here is that the lower performance students, so the students belonging to profile number three, actually have a, a sort of gap between considering control variables and not considering control variables, that is to say the third row that you see on this graph. Which means that for the lowest skills uh, children in this typology of profile, probably there are many things going on that make them be at the bottom class. So the fact that they're, they say, that they perform badly and that they have like low skills in mathematics is, let's say, quite correlated, at least with respect to the other typologies of the students, with information related with their previous uh, background and uh, their context. So we start exploring a little bit, okay, what is going on here? So we start looking at interactions between, that you don't see in this table, but between the models to try to figure out and try to explore a little bit more the behavior of profiles uh, with other information. Here, for example, what we saw is uh, the math profile, so dividing one to, uh, one to four, and some demographic information. So we have uh, 
by uh, citizenship and by a student socioeconomical status. So, and whether they are male and females. So what we see is that, the first thing is that across all nationalities, of course, I mean not of course, but it, it happens, uh, males uh, perform better than females in math, also across all the profiles. In the, you have in the y-axis the prediction of the score at, uh, at grade eight. What we also observe here um, is that especially for Italians, the, if the students have a higher socioeconomic status, then it will tend to perform better, as we see, for all the profiles but for the bottom profile. So for the lower, let's say, lower skills uh, kids, what were they actually, I mean, it's not so drastic the slow, but the, the opposite happens. So if a kid is, has lowest skills in mathematics and they are more richer or they have more resources, they will tend to decrease their performance also later on uh, at grade eight. Um, then we also, for example, wanted to understand the relationship between uh, the profiles and the math scores at grade eight with the school, gra school grades. And what we see is what, uh, let's say, at the left, what is expected. So of course, if you have higher school grades at grade five, you are then also more likely, independent of the profile that you belong, of improving your test score uh, at grade eight. This happens for math, but it doesn't happen for reading. Again, for the lower, uh, for the lowest skills profile. So if a kid uh, doesn't have good skills in mathematics at grade five, it doesn't really matter if she or he have 10 uh, in Italian or in reading as a score match because it doesn't help him or her to improve her uh, or his mathematical score later on in life. Um, then um, one of the uh, final uh, first considerations that we looked at was the relationship between the geographical regions, the profiles, and the context of the, of the socioeconomic status of the class. And what we observe here is that while it doesn't really matter in which type of class the student is, if the student is at the northeast or the north of the country, so the, their performance later on is going to be similar, let's say, independently of the type of profile they belong, we see that it changed a little bit on the center, so especially for the, for the higher achieving kids, so the profile number one, if they belong to a class that, is, uh, that has a higher socioeconomic status, they will tend to improve their performance, but it's drastic, this result is drastic for the southern regions, where pretty much almost all the profiles gain by belonging to a class with a better socioeconomic context, which, yeah, it's kind of, particular, so probably we need to dig down on this result on whether there is such a marked difference uh, uh, through across all the other profiles. So jumping into the conclusion, so uh, the first thing that we discover is that the likelihood of belonging to a profile is more informative, is a more informative predictor of grade A than the math course in primary school. We also know that the proficiency in the area or the skill of functions um, in math, varies among the students classified as having poor and high skilled profiles. Then, to assess the effect of the math profile with poorest skills, so the bottom one, we need to rely also on uh, educational background and contextual variables because the estimates otherwise change a lot. Um, in this case, through the interactions, we figure out that the student says and has math results across all profiles. And this is true, we didn't, I didn't point, the, point this out in the graph, but the exceptions are foreigners of first generation males, where for them to have, let's say, ha a larger socioeconomic status is actually beneficial to increase later on their, their scores. Uh, um, finally, in the north, uh, <coughs> students' graded performance remain consistent across profiles, regardless of the, co of the context of their class, but in certain regions, all profiles are significantly influenced by the class economic system, by the class economic status. This is, as I was telling you at the beginning, let's say just some preliminary exploration of these of these topics. 
we want to examine the consistency of the mass, mass spill profiles across different cohorts. So to see where, whether those profiles <coughs> are consistent also if we look uh, at other primary school kids through all, the, through all other years. And then in this case, we can also verify if there is a difference in the math skills profiles, for example, pre and post COVID. And then finally, we'd also like to explore nonlinear relationships among the profiles and the future academic performance through different statistical methods, like for example, machine learning. And this is all, thank you very much.